A Shishi Guru Goranga Gandharaka Kikira Tarika Radhavi Noad Bihari Radha Govinda Ji Kirti Daladil Vishwam Vishnakar Paramahansa Paragrajitarya Astatara Sata Shri Shimad Abhai Charanara Vinda Bhakti Vedanta Swami Narashila Prabhupada Ki Jai Dali Lipa Vishtom Vishnapad Paramahansa Paragrata Tarya Astatara Sata Shri Shimad Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Gosami Maharaj Shiva Guru Dev Ki Jai Ashi Gaudiya Guru Varga Ki Jai Shi Rupa Shi Sanatam Bhata Raghunasi Jiva Gopala Bhata Das Raghunashat Gosami Prabhu Ki Jai Prem Sikho Si Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Si Adaita Gadadar Si Vasudhi Si Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Si Navadhi Maya Purdam Ki Gangi Devi Ki Juna Devi Ki Si Vrindavan Dhamma Ki Ananta Kuri Vaishnavan Ki Samagata Bhakta Vrinda Ki Si Nitai Dara Prem Anandai Hari Hari Bhav Hari Hari Bhav Hari Bhav It needs to be just a little louder on my do you know where to adjust that? Uh, the one that's the, the volume. Hari the, the red one, just a slightly up. Hari Hari Bo, Hari Bo. Okay, that's good. Deliverance of Jagai and Mount High. Gurve Gaura Chandraya Radhikaya Itadalaya Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tad Bhaktaya Namo Namaha Bande Ham Shri Guru Shri Jutaha Padakamalam Shri Guru Navaishnavamscha Can you check to see if the picture is properly centered? Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ramana Tanvitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitam Shcha Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Mukham Kuroti Vachalam Pangam Langayate Girim Yat Kripa Tamaham Vande Shri Gurun Vinatadana Vansha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Bhavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Namo Mahabhadandaya Krishna Prema Pridayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namine Gauda Tishe Namaha Nityananda Namastupyam Premananda Pradayane Kalau Kalamashanashaya Janava Pataye Namaha Ajanu Lambitabujo Kanakavadato 
<coughs> Samkirtanai Kapitaro Kamalaya Taksho Vishwambaro Dvijavaro Yuga Dharma Palo Bande Jagat Priyakaro Karuna Bataro <coughs> Bande Shri Krishna Chaitanya Nityananda Sahodito Gaudau Daye Pushpavanto Chitro Shamdo Tamonudo Panchatatvatmakam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Swarupakam Bhakta Vataram Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakta Shakti Kam He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi <coughs> Radhe Prinda Avaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priya Jayatam Suruto Pangor Mama Manda Mater Gati Matsarvasva Padam Bojo Radha Madana Mohano Divyad Vrindaranya Kalpa Drumadha Srimadratna Gada Singhasanasto Srimad Radha Srila Govinda Devo Presta Lipi Sevyamano Smarami Shriman Rasarasadam Pi Vam Shivata Tataxtitaha Karshana Venu Swanair Gopir Gopinata Shri Estunaha <coughs> Bhaktiya Vihina Aparad Halakshai Shiptascha Kamadi Taranga Madhye Kripamai Tvam Sharanam Prabhanna Vrinde Numaste Charanara Binda <coughs> Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabho Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Binda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <coughs> First of all, I'm offering my unlimited dandavat pranams. Uh, can we stop the conversation in the kitchen area? Class is now starting. <clears throat> First of all, I'm offering my unlimited dandavat pranams and my shraddha pushpanjali at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Gurudev. Nityalila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Astatarasata Sri Srila A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Srila Prabhupada. Then I'm offering my same unlimited Dandavat Pranams and my Shraddha Pushpanjali at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Siksha Gurudev Nityalila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Asto Tarasata Sri Shila <coughs> Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Goswami Maharaj and Nityalila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Asto Tarasata Sri Shila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. I'm offering my Dandavat pranams to the lotus feet of all of my Sri Sri Rupa Nuga Guru Varga and I'm offering my Dandavat Pranams to all the Vaishnavas 
and all the Vaishnavas. Can you ask them to be quiet? They can go in another room. <clears throat> so, yesterday we uh, discussed, actually, we read Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's uh, introduction to this chapter, which was so wonderful just in itself. But now, there's 400 verses. <laughs> and I'm sure that he didn't mention all, everything that is in this chapter. But interestingly enough, this needs to be just a little louder. Interestingly enough, um, this chapter in Madhya it begins uh, with the first verse of the whole Chaitanya Bhagavat. He repeats that again. You know what that verse is? I say it in my Mangala Charana. Ajanu lambita bujo kanaka vadato sam kirta naika pitaro kamalaya taksho vishwambaro dvijavaro yuga dharma palo bande jagat priyakaro karanavataro this ending, this grammatical ending, like kanakavada tau or kamalaya taksho, this is referring to two in Sanskrit. Uh, so dual. That's why you see, you hear it pitaro, dvijavaro, because it's talking about two persons. The first verse of Chaitanya Bhagavad is talking about two persons. Who are they? That's right. <laughs> and first it's saying, Ajanu Lambita Bujo. So Bujo means arms. What does that mean? Ajanu Lambita Bujo. That's right. That they're, both of their arms extend to their knees. There's a very interesting purport at the first purport in the first chapter. It's quite long. And Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati goes into each one of these. Each one of these, there's actually eight different, because there's four, four lines, and there's two different descriptions in each line. <coughs> but this is the invocation verse of the entire Chaitanya Bhagavata. So, Kanakavadato, what does Kanaka mean? Kanaka means gold. Kanak means gold. So it's saying they have golden yellow complexions. Kanaka vatato. So what does Samkirtanaika Pitaro mean? What does Pitta mean? Father. Father. And Sankirtan. Sankirta Naika Pitaro. That means they are the inaugurators of the congregational chanting of the holy names of the Lord. Then it says Kamalaya Taksho. What does Kamala mean? Lotus. And Aksha. I yes. Kamalaya Taksho. And their eyes resemble the petals of a lotus flower. Vishwambaro. No, no, both. Oh. Both are called Vishwambara. Oh. What does Vishwambara mean? Yeah, just a simple explanation is the maintainer of the living entities. Vishwa Ambara. Right? Then Dvija Varo. Vara, what does vara mean? And you know what vija means, right? No, 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 no. That's bandhu. 
Dvija. Twice born. Dvija. Okay. Dvija varo. That means they are the vara. They are the best. They are the best amongst the twice born. They both took birth externally in a Brahmin family like that. Uh, yuga Dharma Palo. You know what Yuga Dharma means? Palo means the protectors. Palana means to nourish and to protect. Palana. Poshana, palo, palana. Nourishment and maintain, maintaining and protecting. So, Yuga Dharma Palo. Then it says, Vande. What does Vande mean? Yes. Where does it come from? Vande. It comes from Vandanam. Vandanam means what? Prayers. So, Vande Jagat Priya Karo. Jagat Priya Karo. Actually, it doesn't translate it in here directly like that. Jagat Priyakaro means the benefactors, the benefactors of the universe. Priya, we know that means very dear. So they are performing the most uh, beneficial activity for all the living entities in the whole universe. And the final word. Karuna Vataro. Merciful Avatar. Yes. Karuna Vataro. Jaya Jaya Mahaprabhu. <clears throat> Sri Gaura Sundar. Jaya Nityananda. Sarva Sevya Kalevara. All glories to Mahaprabhu. Sri Gaura Sundar. All glories to Nityananda, whose body is the object of everyone's worship. worship. Sarva Sevya Kalevara. Kalevara means body. Sarva Sevya. He is the object of all service and worship. So here, Srila Prabhupada Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur says <clears throat> the phrase Sarva Sevya Kalevara. It is described as follows. Sriman Nityananda Prabhu is Swayam Prakash. You know, there's all these Prakash manifestations, Vilas manifestations. So he is Swayam Prakash. That means he is the direct personal manifestation of the Supreme Lord. <laughs> Therefore, he is the worshipable Lord of everyone, both individually and collectively. From him, Karanadakshai Mahavishnu, who is the cause of all causes, Garbhadakshai, who is the super soul of the collective living entities, and Aniruddha, the localized Vishnu, are all manifest. The supreme worshipable Lord of all, Krishna, he accepts the service of Nityananda who is the embodiment of all service. Nityananda is served by all objects emanating from all of Krishna's energies. So he is both served and servant. Prabhupada used the term Supreme Personality of Servitor Godhead. So, Hena Mate Navadvipe Prabhu Vishwambar Krida Kore Nahe Sarva Nayana Gochara. In this way, Lord Vishwambar performed pastimes in Navadvip that were not seen by everyone. Srila Prabhupada is saying that the pastimes of Sri Gaur Sundar are perceived only through eyes of love. Therefore, where, wherever there is an absence of, the, of love, the Lord's pastimes remain unseen. In the Brahma Samhita, there is a verse that talks about this. 
eyes of love. Yes. That Santaksa Daiva Hridaye Subhilokayanti Yam Shyam Sandara Machintya Gunaswarupam Govinda Mari Purusham Tamaham Bajami. I worship the primeval Lord Govinda, who is always seen by the devotee whose eyes are anointed with the Pope of Love. He is seen in his eternal form of Shyam Sundar, situated within the heart of the devotee. Hridayeshu, in the heart. So now, uh, the story begins. Ordinary people, they saw him like before, simply as Nimai Pandit. Before what? Before he manifested his Sankirtan movement. Now he's fully manifested. Nityananda Prabhu is there, everything. But the ordinary people still saw him like before, as Nimai Pandit. They could not see anything of his characteristics beyond this. So when the Lord entered into the association of his servants, he floated in happiness. He would reveal himself to each devotee in proportion to the devotee's good fortune. Not everybody saw him the same, even amongst the devotees. <clears throat> when he left their association, he would conceal himself. So Srila Prabhupada is saying, since the absolute truth, since the absolute truth is omnipotent, the living entities who are fragmental spiritual parts and parcels, they see the Lord according to their respective devotional qualification. There is no possibility of seeing the personification of all love through vision that is based on external knowledge. Doesn't that make sense? Who's the personification of all love? Krishna, Mahaprabhu. So how is it possible? He says, no, it's not. There's no possibility of seeing the personification of all love through vision that is based on external knowledge. Rather, he remains hidden. Well, how, how, that term, that term, he reserves the right of what? Not being exposed to everybody. And that is why he is known as Adhok Shaja, or he who is beyond the perception of the material senses. Now one day, Ekadin Acham Bite Hoilo Henomati, Agya Koilo Nityananda Haridasa Prati. One day the Lord suddenly ordered Nityananda and Haridas as follows. Shuno, Shuno, this is the famous verse. All the Bengalis, they know this verse. <laughs> All the Bengali devotees. Shuno, Shuno, Nityananda. Shuno, Haridas. What does Shuno mean? Yes. Hear me, Nityananda. Hear me, Haridas. Sarvatra Amar Agya Koroho Prakash. Go out and preach my order everywhere. Sarvatra Amar Agya, my order, Koroho Prakash. So, Prabhupada is saying that the Lord's order is meant for everyone. Those who are outside Varnashram, those who follow Varnashram, those who are beyond Varnashram, all living entities, all plants, the animate, the inanimate, individually and collectively, according to their ability, all should accept Mahaprabhu's orders. So that applies to our demon friends who are trying to usurp. We should go and tell them. <laughs> yes. Um, I wanted to just read the purport to that previous verse that one day the Lord suddenly ordered Nityananda and Haridas as follows. 
<coughs> those who are able to become a kimchan, they are not greedy for any material object. Without becoming a kinchan, what does a kinchan mean? Possessionless. Huh? Possessionless. Yep. You know, Gurudev, he used to always refer to our Srila Prabhupada when he was staying at Radha Damodar, remember? He would say, I have seen him. How a kinchan he was. He did not even have a covering on the floor. I had to take my chatter and put it there to sit. How a kinchana he was, I saw. So those who are able to become a kinchan, they are not greedy for any material object. And without becoming a kinchan, the necessity of the absolute truth is not realized. So that's a precursor, huh? One second. That's a precursor, right? Without becoming a kinchan, no one can understand how important, how necessary my trying to approach the absolute truth is without becoming a kinchan. So that's why when Prabhupada came, he began to introduce the lifestyle of a kinchan. And he himself was the personification of a kinchan. Then he even shaved off their hair and made them hairless akinjanas. <laughs> he was trying to introduce Brahminical culture. Brahminical culture means what? What is the wealth of the Brahminas? Austerity. Yes. Austerity. Yeah. Detachment. Renunciation. Uh, otherwise, no one can realize the absolute truth and no one can understand the importance of it. That's why in the hedonistic society today, Krishna is crushing all of this sense gratification, hopes and dreams and fantasies of everybody because it was just getting too much. Now he's going to put them through a very, a very good grinding mill and grind down their desires for material things. They'll be searching for the real thing. Yes. Yes, Maharaj. What's the difference, Maharaj, between this kinchen and our kinchen? Similar. It's like an adjective, similar. Nis kinchen. Nish means without. Without anything. A kinchana means having something. Kinchana. But a kinchana means having nothing. Except what? <laughs> Except the Supreme who is everything. That's why Yasmin. Ah. Yasmin vidyate sarvam eva vigyatam bhavati. Prabhupada used to say that, that one very often. What does that mean? Yasmin vidyate sarvam eva vigyatam bhavati. That means, Yasmin means him, Krishna, the Supreme. If anyone understands him, Yasmin vigyate, vidyam, vigyam, they realize him. Sarvam eva vigyatam bhavati. He will realize and understand everything. Then it says yasmin prapti or prapte. Sarvam eva praptam bhavati. If he attains him, he attains everything. So that's why a kinshan is necessary. But it has to manifest outwardly. And that's why we see like in the life of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. It was like progressively more and more and more a kinchan, detached, detached, detached. And whenever in Mahaprabhu was watching each step, each stage, right? Oh, he became so pleased. And when he even renounced like begging for food and he went to the place where the rotten rice was being eaten by the cows and he washed off the part that was rotten and ate the inner kernel, Mahaprabhu came there at that time. Oh. I hear you are having great feasts of Jagannath Mahaprasadam and you're not inviting me. <laughs> and then what happened? He tried to hide it away from Mahab and Mahab was snatched. Took some. This is the most high nectar I've ever tasted in my life. It's and he was going to take more and it's Rupa Dhamma. No, my Lord, that's enough. <laughs> so, 
without becoming a kinchon, the necessity of the absolute truth is not realized. Such persons are attracted by the opulence of perishable objects. They're attracted to the, to the opulence of perishable objects. That means anything in this world, because everything in this world is perishable, is it not? Everything. Uh, so those who are akinshan have no attraction to anything of the perishable objects of this world. They utilize it for the service of the Lord, but they have no attraction at all. Oh, let me get money. Oh, let me get wealth. Let me get nice wife. Let me get a good house. All these things. They have no attraction at all for it. You know that story? Prabhupada on his morning walk. And I think it's called Cheviot Hills. Where he used to walk. You've probably gone there with him. And there was mansions and so forth. Maybe you were even there on this morning walk. That was when... Um, Around 1972, I think it was, and Hridayananda Maharaj, Satsrup Maharaj, maybe a couple of others, they took sannyas. And Prabhupada was on this morning walk. And so they were walking in front of, uh, you know, these, these mansions. They had like big gates and everything. And then Prabhupada stopped in front of one of those. And then he, he spat on the, on the sidewalk. Do you know what he said? No. You never heard of this one? No, I was no, actually in San Francisco. I couldn't have been. Uh, oh, but okay. Yeah. But that's where Reed Dayananda Maharaj was born and raised, at Cheville Hills. Oh. It's, it's, it's kind of interesting to see what's going on in the world. Right. Actually, you know, he's the one that told this because he came to Chicago after he took sannyas in 1972 and he visited at that time. That's the first time that I met him. And he told that story. So I heard it right from the horse's mouth. Anyway, Prabhupada spat on the ground. And then he said, a sannyasi should never, ever look at the gross materialistic sense enjoyers of this world and what they have obtained uh, with the thought in his mind, oh, I could have had that. Yeah. Very dangerous for a sannyasi to contemplate, oh, just see that person, said, oh, I could have had that. That's his Prabhupada's lesson in one sentence. Yeah. So, without becoming a kinchan, the necessity of the absolute truth is not realized. Such persons are attracted by the opulence of perishable objects. Sri Nityananda Prabhu, he appeared in a Brahmin family that in, that engaged in the study of the scriptures. In the worldly identification of Thakur Haridas, there were no such Brahminical birth nor such Brahminical activities. During Sri Chaitanya Dev's manifested pastimes, sinful persons like the Shakas, the Greeks, and the Yavanas. They lived in various parts of India. Yes. During Mahaprabhu's manifested pastimes. Since Navadweep was the residence of many classes of foreigners coming from beyond the Sindhu River, there was a great deal of discrimination among the residents of Navadweep. Brahmin and Smarta Brahmin, all of this. So much discrimination because there were so many Yavanas and and that is why the exemplary preacher, Lord Gaur Sundar, engaged two great personalities who were fully absorbed in devotional service to preach amongst the communities of persons belonging to both faiths. So, Haridas Thakur 
and Brahman Nityananda, Brahman birth Nityananda. Yes. Realizing that people of the Aryan culture and the Yavana culture would not listen to each other, the qualification for chanting the name of Hari was given to both, given to both, to make it known that both have an equal right to engage in devotional service. So, now Mahabrabhu continues. <clears throat> Prati gore gore gya koro e biksha. That means go to each house and ask for this biksha. Bolo Krishna, Bajo Krishna, Koro Krishna Siksha. Chant the names of Krishna, worship Krishna, follow Krishna's instructions. So now Srila Prabhupada explains that a bhikshuk, what is a bhikshuk? One who goes out and collects bhiksha. Yeah. So a bhikshuk is dependent on the donor. Therefore, knowing that the bhikshuk is situated on a lower platform, the higher placed donor becomes compassionate on him. Right, Maharaj? What are we? What's our title? Yes, Tridandi Bhikshu. <laughs> the, carry, the carriers of the triple staff the, who are beggars. And that's why Srila Prabhupada signed his prayer on Boston Harbor. The insignificant beggar. A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. So, when you go to someone for begging, you are posturing yourself in a lower position than them, now you please give me bened benediction. So, to beg for someone's favor is called bhiksha. The higher place donor comes down from his platform and uplifts the needy bhikshuk. Realizing that when Nityananda Prabhu, the lord of the 14 worlds, and Nam Acharya, Thakur Hari Das, the grandfather of everyone and the best of the pure devotees, would go begging alms in the dress of bhikshuks, wealthy people would have no alms suitable to offer them. So Gorsundar employed the act of begging alms to bring those people to the transcendental kingdom. The phrase, Bolo Krishna, is explained as follows. Words that are not related to Krishna are more or less products of avidvad rudhi. Avidvad rudhi. That means oh, just the conventional meanings of words according to persons who are not enlightened. So, Bolo Krishna. When a word's vidvad rudi, the other term is avidvad rudi, when a word's vidvad rudi or its conventional meaning according to enlightened persons is realized, it indicates Krishna. And such meanings are non different from Krishna. One who chants the names of Krishna benefits his audience. And after achieving his own auspiciousness, he merges in the ocean of ecstasy due to remembrance of the Lord. When words indicate objects that are not related to Krishna, then the conditioned souls forget their constitutional position and they consider themselves the enjoyers. At that time, the senses turn away from the service of Rishikesh and they lord it over Rishikesh's external energy. <clears throat> the Lord's instruction, chant the name of Krishna, is the prime example of the Lord's magnanimity. 
The name of Krishna is not different from Krishna. Only Krishna in the form of Guru can teach this. Becoming initiated into this teaching and eagerly preaching such teachings is service to Sri Chaitanya. And in order to make this known, Sri Nityananda Prabhu and Sri Namacharya Haridas follow the order of the Lord. One who knows Sri Nityananda Prabhu as the origin of Guru Tattva and who, after being freed from the bondage of material existence, chants Krishna's name, which appeared in the form of address from the mouth of Sri Namacharya Hari Das, will be delivered from all material obstacles and attain Krishna Prem, which is the goal of all living entities. Through Nityananda Prabhu, Sri Gaur Sundar has imparted the qualification for chanting the name of Krishna to every human being. So that pretty much explains why Nityananda Shakti descended into Srila Prabhupada. <clears throat> Through Nityananda Prabhu, Sri Gaur Sundar has imparted the qualification for chanting the name of Krishna to every human being. One who awards this qualification cannot be anyone other than Krishna. Because if one does not possess something, how can he give it to others? The name and the person are non-different. And therefore, as soon as the holy names are chanted, the love of Krishna is guaranteed. Only Krishna can say this. Since Krishna Prem is unattainable for persons who are absorbed in thoughts of objects not related to Krishna, the vibration of words that are not meant for the glorification of Krishna, it results in material bondage. Then he has this in quotations. Let the people of the world engage in glorifying Krishna. Although this order was given to the original Sri Jagat Guru Dev and Sri Namacharya, since these two Acharyas carried out this order of the Lord, all pious persons who follow this order will also certainly become qualified to act as Acharyas, who alone are able to fully engage in the service of Sri Chaitanya. In the language of a bhikshuk, Bolo Krishna, Chant the name of Krishna indicates the deliverance of the living entities. That's what it means. Bolo Krishna means the deliverance of the living entities. The phrase Bhaja Krishna is explained as follows. See, we would never know if we don't read the purports. We know something, but how deep Srila Prabhupada goes, huh? <clears throat> so the phrase Bhaja Krishna is explained as follows. What does that mean? Bhaja Krishna? Worship, worship. Do bhajan to Krishna, worship Krishna. Sri Chaitanya Dev ordered the two preachers to appeal to the conditioned souls to engage in the worship of Krishna. Since the living entities who are averse to Krishna are attracted to objects that are not related to Krishna, they take shelter of the enjoyment propensity with a desire to become the controllers of those relatively inferior objects. Therefore, giving up the worship of Krishna, they consider sense, sense enjoyment as the goal and they desire to become the master of that. So such activities are impediments in their worship. Persons who are averse to the worship of Krishna, they have various qualifications in this world. In order to achieve those qualifications, the living entity gives up the worship of Krishna and engages in the service 
of the six enemies headed by lust and anger. And in this way, he invites inauspiciousness by thinking himself the enjoyer of this manifest world. For the benefit of the living entities, the most magnanimous Sri Vishwambar ordered the two Prabhus, Sri Nityananda and Haridas, to preach the concept of worshiping Krishna under the shelter of the holy name. And now the third order. Bolo Krishna, Bajo Krishna, Koro Krishna Siksha. The phrase Koro Krishna Siksha is explained as follows. <clears throat> we'll, I'm going to finish this purport, then I'm just going to start reading just the verses. How important to understand, because that's a very simple instruction, but behind those three orders, the full attainment of the living entity's good fortune is there in just those three instructions. We can do that to this very day. Go to any doorstep and beg the person, chant Krishna, worship Krishna, hear about Krishna, learn the science of Krishna. That's what book distribution actually means, right? In essence. Because he told them to go door to door. And we also went door to door at different times, quite a bit. <laughs> but actually, whether you're in a hustling, bustling, metropolis, port authority place <laughs> or airport, you're actually giving the same instructions. Our objective is to get the people to chant the name of Krishna, to worship Krishna, and to understand Krishna Siksha. So let's see what this means, Koro Krishna Siksha. Krishna alone is the object of learning. Alone. There's nothing else to learn about except for Krishna. Whatever you're learning, if it's not connected to Krishna, it has no value. So when self-realized persons see spiritual variegatedness, after realizing the meaning of kartaram isham purusham brahma yonim, that means the Supreme Lord, the Personality of Godhead, is the source of the Supreme Brahman. So, when self-realized persons see spiritual variegatedness after realizing the meaning of this statement, then they understand the, the insignificance of knowledge that is not related to Krishna. Krishna alone attracts all objects of this world. His beauty is extraordinary and incomparable. He is full of knowledge. Only he is capable of dictating that objects not related to him are fit to be renounced. Only he, only Krishna can give that instruction. He, Krishna, is a verse to enjoy any object other than his devotees. So he's the supremely renounced, right? That's a in very interesting statement here. That Krishna is a verse to enjoy any object other than his devotees. So that's all that he does, is he just engages in exchanges of rasa with his devotees. That's all that he does. He doesn't do anything outside of that. Uh, by the influence of Krishna Siksha, what's that? Krishna Siksha. Yeah. So, by that influence of Krishna Siksha, the living entities realize that they are eternal. We never knew that before, did we? No. Did we know that before we came in contact with these teachings? No. But as soon as we came in contact with these teachings, then what happened? Oh, I'm not really this body that I've been looking at in the mirror all these years and combing my hair. <laughs> so, 
So by the influence of Krishna Siksha, the living entities realize they are eternal. Such instructions destroy all nescience and all ignorance of the living entities. And on the strength of Krishna Siksha, there is no opportunity for unhappiness resulting from proximity with objects not related to Krishna. By the influence of Krishna Siksha, then you're protected against that. <clears throat> so by obtaining Krishna Siksha, all perfection is achieved. The mirror of one's mind is cleansed. The blazing forest fire of material existence is extinguished. The supreme goal of life is achieved. And one realizes that Krishna Siksha is the purport of all education. He just quoted the four effects. Chaito Dharpanam Arjanam, Bhava Mahadavagni Nirvapanam, Shreya Kairava Chandrika Vitaranam, Vidya Vidhu Jivanam. Those four. He just quoted that. And that comes from what? Krishna Siksha. So, when, when this state is achieved by a living entity, he cannot be contaminated. He cannot. Rather, he becomes purified and he attains supreme happiness at every moment. <clears throat> Krishna Siksha is the giver of all opulences that deride all other processes for achieving the goal of life. And Krishna Siksha is the bestower of the highest platform of all sweetness. Krishna Siksha is the destroyer of the living entities enjoying propensity. And Krishna Siksha is the belittler of liberation. Therefore, Krishna Siksha is most necessary for all living entities who desire their own benefit. End of the purport. Isn't that nice? Bolo Krishna, Bajo Krishna, Koro Krishna Siksha. So then Mahaprabhu continued. Now I'm just reading the verses. <clears throat> Apart from this, Iha bai ar na bolibo balai badin avasane asi amare kohibo. Apart from this, you should not speak, or you should not have others speak anything else. Apart from what? Babolo Krishna, Baja Krishna, Mahaprabhu is telling them only say this. Don't say anything else. Don't let anybody else say anything else. And at the end of the day, you come and give me your report. I just have to read this one little explanation here. Because why did he tell them that? To chant the holy names of Krishna, to serve Krishna by engaging in kirtan, and to become educated in Krishna Siksha by being inclined to service, these are the only duties of the living entities. You should not beg anyone for anything other than to engage in these activities and you should not teach anyone any other subject. For the benefit of all living entities, you should throughout the day beg for the alms that I have described to you and in the evening you should report to me. I will be greatly pleased if I know that you are trying to benefit all living entities. This is my mission. You are like my right and left hands. So, we experience this. Even though Prabhupada wasn't physically in front of us, but we experience this every day in our early period. Going out, chanting on the streets all day long, distributing some books, coming back to the temple, sitting in front of Prabhupada's picture, and we had little juggernaut deities in Chicago Temple. And, but the reports would be given to Srila Prabhupada, who is the, the representative of Goranga Mahaprabhu. Uh, 
And basically, that's what we were doing. The temple president would write a letter, right, Rishabh Dev Prabhu? He would write a letter to Prabhupada and let Prabhupada know what the progress has been in the preaching mission, right? And, and Prabhupada would respond. Like? Yeah, I'd like to mention each devotee's name and what they were yeah. doing. So, because, <laughs> yeah. Yes. So now, Mahaprabhu says something very heavy. Tomar Korile Bhiksha Jaina Balibo Tabiami Chakrahaste Sabari Koti Katibo. I will take up my chakra and cut off the heads of those who will not chant after being requested by you. <laughs> I'm not going to read the purport because we'll just never get to the story. <laughs> Well, but everything story. is explained by. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Prabhupada is saying, I will destroy that person who becomes inimical to your request for alms by giving him unlimited misery. Many people contemplate as follows being most merciful. Why has the Lord created the cruel misfortunes in this world? And the verse, Tatenu Kampam verse, My dear Lord, one who earnestly waits for you to bestow your causeless mercy upon him, all the while patiently suffering the reactions of his past misdeeds and offering you respectful obeisances with his heart, words and body is surely eligible for liberation for it has become his rightful claim so Prabhupada is saying the verse Tatenu Kampam is the appropriate answer to this question which question why has the Lord created the cruel misfortunes of this world if a living entity who is averse to Krishna, spends his days in material endeavors, then in accordance with the laws of the material world, he will achieve miseries for cessation of his material existence. Yes. Now, <clears throat> on hearing this order, all the Vaishnavas laughed. Which order? That I'll call my chakra and I'll cut off all their heads and give them unlimited misery. <laughs> then he, he says, Vrindavan Thakur says, on hearing this order, uh, on hearing the order, all the Vaishnavas laughed. Who has the power to transgress his order? His order is such that even Nityananda carries it on his head. Anyone who does not believe this is not very intelligent. If one serves Advaita, but does not accept Chaitanya, then Advaita will destroy him without remorse. Accepting the Lord's order on their heads, Nityananda and Haridas smiled and immediately went out on the street. And being ordered by the Lord, the two went door to door and requested everyone, chant the name of Krishna, sing the glories of Krishna, and engage in the worship of Krishna. Then they also said, Krishna Pran, Krishna Dana, Krishna Sejivan, Heno Krishna Bolobai, Hoy Ekman. This is how they preached. Krishna is your life. Krishna Pran. Krishna is your wealth, Krishna Dana. Krishna is your very life and soul, Krishna Say Jivana. O oh, brothers, chant the name of that Krishna with full attention. So in this way, the two controllers of the universe, they went to every house as they wandered throughout Nadia. Why is he calling them the controllers of the universe? <laughs> because they just so happen to be. <laughs> Lord Brahma, <laughs> Mahasamkarshan, Nityananda, 
Yeah. <coughs> so Bhakti Bhaktisiddhanta Prabhupada says, this Sri Nityananda Prabhu and Sri Namachari Haridas Thakur, they are both controllers of the universe. The people of this world, they accept wrong paths and they fall into calamities. These two lords, they provide auspiciousness to such misguided people by becoming their guides. Protecting the living entities from prajalpa and engaging their speech in the service of the Lord, the expert guide Thakur Haridas helps them control their sinful minds and he invites the favorable flow of thoughts in order to protect their body and limbs from aversion to the worship of Krishna and thus he delivers them from their bodily hardships. And Lord Nityananda, he removes the unhappiness of this world and he merges the living entities in eternal bliss. Jai Nitai Haridas Ki Jai. So both were dressed as sannyasis. At every house they went, they were eagerly invited to take their meal. Nityananda and Haridas would then say, our only request is that you chant the names of Krishna, worship Krishna, and follow the teachings of Krishna. And after speaking in this way, the two departed. Those who were pious, they became most pleased. <clears throat> Hearing the unprecedented words from the mouths of those two, various people found varieties of pleasure while discussing various related topics. Some happily said, we will do, we will do. Others said, these two are crazy because of bad advice. You have become mad on account of bad association. Why have you come to make us mad? Or many sober and civilized persons have become mad in this way. Nimai Pandit has spoiled them all. So as soon as the two went to the houses of those who were not allowed to see Lord Chaitanya's dancing, those people said, beat them, beat them. You know, because those nightly kirtans, right? And they were restricted. So they, become, they became so angry. <laughs> so when they saw <laughs> Nitai and Haridas, beat them, beat them. Mara, mara. Then someone said, Perhaps these, perhaps these two are the spies of a thief. They are wandering door to door on the pretext of preaching. Why would a Sujan act in that way? If they come again, we will take them to the king. So on hearing such talk, Nityananda and Haridas laughed. On the strength of Lord Chaitanya's order, they were not frightened. In this way, the two daily wandered from door to door and then reported to Vishwambar at the end of the day. And one day, they saw two drunkards on the street. The two were fully intoxicated and they acted like great rogues. <clears throat> there were unlimited stories about the two, for there was no sin that they had not committed. Although they were brahmanas, they were always engaging in drinking wine, eating beef, plundering others' wealth, and go mamsa is the word here, meat of the cow, plundering others' wealth and burning others' houses. They avoided royal punishment and the notices of the town authorities. They did not pass a day without wine and meat. The two would roll on the street and they would punch anyone they met. As people watched these incidents from a distance, Nityananda and Haridas arrived there. And sometimes the two displayed affection for each other and sometimes they pulled each other's hair while cursing. Sometimes they ruined the caste of the Brahmins of Nadia. And sometimes under the influence of wine, they would speak solacing words to someone. 
Every type of sin became manifest in the bodies of these two, except the sin of blaspheming Vaishnava. <clears throat> they happily spent their days and nights in the company of other drunkards. Therefore, they had no opportunity to blaspheme the Vaishnavas. <laughs> uh, the assembly in which Vaishnavas are blasphemed, that assembly will be ruined. Even if all other religious principles are observed. That's a good one. Any assembly in which Vaishnavas are blasphemed will be ruined. Even if all other religious principles are observed. If an assembly of sannyasis indulges in blasphemy, then that assembly is more sinful than an assembly of drunkards. A drunkard will be delivered in due course of time, but one who engages in blasphemy will never attain the goal of life. Even after studying the scriptures, many persons lose their intelligence and they bring about their utter ruin by blaspheming Nityananda. The two drunkards, they punched and abused each other as Nityananda and Haridas watched from a distance. Nityananda personally asked some people, to which caste do these two belong? Why do they act like that? Then the people replied, oh Gosai, these two are brahmanas. Their virtuous father and mother both come from respectable families. Their ancestors have all lived in Nadia, and they were all free from the slightest fault. These two qualified persons gave up their religiosity and have been engaged in such sinful activities since birth. And considering that they were most sinful, their relatives rejected them, and now they freely wander about with other drunkards. When the residents of Nadia saw these two, they fear that the two may someday burn their house. There is no sin that these two have not committed. They plunder, steal, drink wine, and eat meat. So after hearing this, the kind-hearted Nityananda mercifully contemplated how to deliver the two. He thought, the Lord has incarnated to deliver the sinful. Where will he find such sinners as these? Wow, there's a big long purport here talking about all different classes of sinners with different quotes from Shastras. He kept on he thought, Nityananda thought, this, the Lord secretly manifests himself. People who do not see his influence, they make fun of him. If the Lord bestows his mercy on these two, then the whole world will know his glories. If I can reveal Lord Chaitanya to them, then I, Nityananda, will be known as Lord Chaitanya's servant. Now they are fully intoxicated, they do not know themselves. If only they could become intoxicated like this, under the influence of Krishna's names. If the two cry as they say, Oh my Lord, then my wandering will be successful, Nityananda thought. If persons who previously took bath in the Ganga with their clothes on, when they touch the shadow of these Two, if, if those persons <clears throat> consider themselves as purified as having taken bath in the Ganges by seeing them, then my name will be remembered. The glories of Sri Nityananda Prabhu are unlimited. He has incarnated to deliver the fallen souls, Vrindavan Das Thakur is saying. So after contemplating in this way, the Lord said to Hari Das, O oh, Haridas, look at their miserable condition. Although they are brahmanas, their behavior is most abominable. These two will not be able to avoid the punishment 
of Yamaraj. When you, Haridas, were beat practically, practically to death by the Yamanas, you thought about even their welfare. If you think about the welfare of these two, then they will certainly be delivered. The Lord never neglects to fulfill your desire, Nita is telling to Haridas. This truth was personally disclosed by the Lord. Let the entire world see Lord Chaitanya's influence when he delivers these two. And just as the Puranas, they sing about the deliverance of Ajamil, now let the three worlds directly see such pastimes. Haridas knew well the glories of Nityananda Prabhu. Therefore, he could understand that the two were already delivered. <laughs> Haridas Prabhu said, Listen, O Mahashai, <coughs> your desire <coughs> is certainly the Lord's desire. You, de you deceive me just as one deceives an animal. And in this way, you repeatedly teach me. Then Lord Nityananda smiled and embraced Haridas. He then softly spoke as follows. Let us go and inform these two drunkards of the Lord's order that we are carrying around. The Lord's order is for everyone to worship Krishna. But this is especially meant for the most sinful. Our responsibility is to simply repeat the Lord's order. If people do not follow, that is his responsibility. His, with the capital H, wow. the Lord's, yes. Then Nityananda and Haridas went to inform the two of the Lord's order. Saintly people prohibited them, saying, don't go near them. If they catch you, you will lose your lives. We hide inside the house and we tremble. How can you dare to approach them? Those two have no respect for sannyasis. They have killed unlimited brahmins and cows. <sighs> Nevertheless, the two prabhus chanted the name of Krishna and joyfully went before the two. They came only close enough to be heard. And then they loudly informed them of the Lord's order. Bolo Krishna, Bajo Krishna, Loho Krishna Nam, Krishna Mata, Krishna Pita, Krishna Dana Pran. Say Krishna, worship Krishna, chant the names of Krishna. Krishna is your mother, Krishna is your father, and Krishna is your life and wealth. Krishna has incarnated for your benefit. Therefore, give up all sinful activities and worship Krishna. Big long purport to that, to this, wow, does he have long? So on hearing their call, the two turned their heads and their eyes. Their eyes became red with anger. And after lifting their heads and seeing the forms of the sannyasis, the two ran towards them shouting, catch them, catch them. <laughs> Nityananda and Haridas quickly ran away as the two rogues chased them, shouting, stop, stop. Abusing them with harsh words, they chased behind the two Prabhus who ran away out of fear. People said, we warned them before, now these two sannyasis are in danger. Then all the atheists, they smiled and they thought, Lord Narayan has given proper punishment to those imposters. The pious Brahmanas said, save them Krishna, save them Krishna. They then left that place in fear. The two rogues chased behind as the two lords ran away. Although the rogues declared that they caught them, they were unable. Nityananda said, we thought it would be good to turn them into Vaishnavas, but we'll be lucky if we survive today <laughs> as they're running. Then Haridas said, oh Lord, what can I say? Today I will die prematurely because of your ideas. Because you have tried to give Krishna's instructions to drunkards, we have received proper punishment, almost losing our lives. Speaking in this way, the lords, the lords laughed as they ran away. The two rogues chased after them while shouting abusive words. 
I remember how Gurudev used to say <laughs> of this incident that Haridas Thakur was a bit, a bit stocky, or I forget the word that he used, you know? Stout and older. Yeah, and, and it was not so easy for him to, to run as it was for Nityananda, right? So, but as he was running, then he said, just see, just because of you, now I'm going to lose my life. <laughs> oh, it says right here. No, this is about the drunkards. The two drunkards <coughs> had fat bodies, so they could hardly walk, yet somehow they ran swiftly. The two rogues, they said, oh, brothers, where will you go? How will you escape Jagai and Madhai today? Oh, they're saying, as they're chasing them, oh, brothers, where will you go? How will you escape Jagai and Madhai today? You do not know that Jagai and Madhai live here. Wait a moment and see who's behind you. Hearing their words, the two lords ran in fear as they called out, Save us, Krishna! Save us, Krishna! Hey, Govinda! Haridas said, I cannot go further. Why did I knowingly come with this restless person? <laughs> Krishna just saved me from the wrath of the Yavanas, and now today I will lose my life due to your mischievous nature. Nityananda said, I'm not a restless person. Think carefully. It is your Lord who is agitated. Although he is a Brahmana, he gives orders like a king. They're talking about Mahaprabhu. On his instruction, we preach door to door. He gives orders that we have never heard before. And as a result, people call us thieves and hypocrites. If we disobey his order, we'll be ruined. And if we follow his order, this is the result. You do not admit your Lord's fault. Although we both speak to them, although we both spoke to them, you accuse me of being at fault, Nityananda says to Haridas. So in this way, the two Prabhus engaged in blissful quarrels as they watched the two rogues chasing them from, uh, chasing them become confused. They ran towards the Lord's house. And while the two rogues rolled on the ground, being intoxicated by wine, Unable to see the two Prabhus, the drunkards gave up the chase and eventually began to push and shove each other. I always remember the play in Australia, Damodar Maharaj, uh, yeah, at that time he was Radhanath. And who was the other one? Oh, Lalit Mohan. <laughs> they played Jagai and Madhai. They were punching each other. And Gurudev was watching and laughing. So, uh, being intoxicated by wine, the two could not remember a thing about where they were before and where they were now. So after a while, the two Prabhus looked back and they could not see where the two rogues had gone. The two felt pacified and they embraced each other. They laughed and then they went to see Vishwambar. The lotus-eyed Mahaprabhu was sitting the limbs of his body were so beautiful that his form bewildered even Cupid. He was surrounded by the Vaishnavas who were discussing topics of Krishna amongst themselves. The Lord joyfully discussed his own glories in that assembly, just as the Lord of Svetadvip did in the association of sages headed by Sanaka. At that time, Nityananda and Haridas came before the Lord and they reported to him what had happened that day. <clears throat> they said, Today we have seen two strange persons. They were great drunkards, yet they called themselves Brahmins. We nicely requested them to chant the names of Krishna, and in response they chased us, yet we fortunately survived. Then the Lord said, Who are those two? What are their names? Why would Brahmins engage in such activities? Gangadas and Srivas, who were sitting before the Lord, they began to relate the sinful activities of those two. O oh Lord, the names of those two are Jagai and Madhai. They are the sons of a pious Brahmin and they were born here. And due to bad association, they have developed such mentality. They have been attached to drinking wine since their birth. <laughs> 
Everyone in Nadia is afraid of these two. There is no house that has not been plundered by them. There is no limit to their sinful activities. O oh Lord, you know and you see everything. Then the Lord said, Somehow, this finicky screen. I'll find it again. We're just about finished for today. Uh, yes. Then the Lord said, I know these two fellows. If they come here, I will cut them to pieces. Nityananda said, you may cut them to pieces, but I will not go out as long as they are there. Why do you brag so, why do you brag so much? First get these two to chant the name of Govinda. A pious person naturally chants the name of Krishna but these two do not know anything other than sinful activities. If you deliver these two by awarding them devotional service, then I will know that you are Patita Pavana. This is Nityananda talking and, and Haridas to Mahaprabhu. If you deliver these two by awarding them devotional service, then I will know that you are Patita Pavana, the deliverer of the fallen. The deliverance of these two will certainly be more glorious than the deliverance of me. Then Vishambar smiled and replied, they were delivered the moment they got your darshan. You are so concerned for their benefit that Krishna will soon arrange for their well-being. On hearing these words from the lotus mouth of the Lord, all the devotees chanted, Jai, Jai, Hari, Hari. They were all convinced that the two were already delivered. Haridas then went before Advaita and he spoke as follows. The Lord sends me with this restless person. He leaves me, be he leaves me behind and who knows where he goes. During the rainy season, there are many crocodiles in the Ganga and he goes swimming in the waters to catch them. In great anxiety, I call him loudly from the riverbank, but he continually floats around in the waters of the Ganga. If he sees some boys, he comes out of the water and he chases them to beat them. When their parents come with sticks in their hands, I fall at their feet and I send them back. He steals butter and yogurt from the cowherd men and he flees and they catch me and they want to beat me. Whatever he does, is unreasonable. When he sees an unmarried girl, he tells her, marry me. He rides on the back of an ox and he declares that he is Mahesh. He takes milk from others' cows and he drinks it. When I try to teach him something, he abuses me and he says, what can your Advaita do to me? And Sri Chaitanya, whom you consider the Lord, what can he do to me? I have not said anything about this to the Lord, but today, my life has been saved by providence. So there were two great drunkards lying in the street, and he went before them to preach Krishna's instructions. And in great anger, they rushed to kill us. It is your mercy that our lives have been saved. Then Advaita smiled, and he said, This is not at all astonishing, for drunkards should associate with other drunkards. It is befitting that the three drunkards were together. But being a celibate, why were you there? <laughs> Asking Haridas. Nityananda will make everyone intoxicated. I know his character very well. Just wait and see. Within two or three days, he will bring those drunkards into our assembly. And while speaking in this way, <clears throat> Advaita became overwhelmed with anger. With, without any clothing on, he spoke with great emphasis. 
everyone will hear about Lord Chaitanya's devotional service to Krishna and they will see his potency, how he dances and chants. You will see tomorrow how Nimai and Nitai will bring the two drunkards and dance with them. They will make the two equal to us and we will have to run away to save our caste. On seeing Advaita's angry mood, Haridas smiled. He was convinced that the drunkards would be delivered. Who has the power to understand Advaita's words? Only Haridas Prabhu can understand him. Many sinful people take the side of Advaita and they criticize Gadadhar. They will be burnt to death. Any sinful person who takes the side of one Vaishnava and blasphemes another Vaishnava is certainly ruined. This is the actual section that Srila Puri, Bhakti Pramod Purimaj was quoting in the very beginning of that book, The Heart of Krishna. He quoted this very verse. Yeah, about Vaishnava Parad. Yes. So as the two drunkards, drunkards wandered from place to place, they came to the bathing ghat where the Lord would take his bath in the Ganga. And by divine arrangement, they made that place their base from which they would go out to raid various places. Now it's right near to Mahaprabhu's house. So whether influential, rich or poor, all people's hearts became filled with fear. No one went to take bath in the Ganga at night. And if they did, they went in groups of 10 or 20. Yeah. They stayed, this is the last verse I'll read for tonight. Wow, I really went over time. They stayed near the Lord's house and they listened to the Lord's kirtan as they remained awake throughout the night. Being intoxicated with wine, they joyfully danced as they listened to the sound of the kartals and radangas in the kirtan. As they could hear everything from that distance, they would listen, dance, and then drink more wine. Whenever there was kirtan, the two would stay there. When they heard the kirtan, they would get up and dance. They were so overwhelmed by drinking wine that they did not remember where they had been or where they were. And when they saw the Lord, they said, Oh, Nimai Pandit, you should sing the entire song of Mangal Chandi. You have expert singers who we wish to see. We will bring and give you whatever you need. And seeing those miscreants, the Lord kept a distance. Others took another path and they fled away. And after wandering throughout the city, one day, Nityananda went that night before the two. And tomorrow, we'll find out what happened. We'll be here tomorrow. I gotta go to uh, Oh. What text is it? What number? Is it's uh, 173. Okay. Yeah. Jaini Mai, Jaini Tai, Jaini Tai, Gor Premanandi, Hari Hari Bo, Mancha, Kamputu, Vishcha, Kripa, Sindhu, Vivacha, Patitanam, Pavani, Bio, Vaishnavi, Bio, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Itai Gaur Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol. Itai Gaur Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol. Jai Shri Shri Guru Gauranga Gandharvika Giridhari Shri Shri Radha Govinda Jiyo Ki Jai. Shri Chaitanya Bhagavat Ki Jai. Shri Vrindavan Das Thakur Ki Jai. Shri Nitai Gauranga Ki Jai. Namacharya Hari Das Thakur Ki Jai. Advaita. Acharya Prabhu Ki Jai. Jai, the deliverance of Jagai and Madhai Ki Jai. Gaur Premanandi. Vrindai Tulsi Devai Priyai Keshavasya Jai. Krishna Bhakti Prade Devi. Satya Vachai Namo Nama. Mancha Kalpata Vibhascha Kripa Sindhu Deva Chai. Patitaram Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Mo. You just have to loosen that and then take it out.